Hi folks, welcome to your best French wine tasting kit from Smash Grapes. Coming up, you've got our six drink along videos with a little bit more information on all the wines in your kit. Enjoy. This is the Pick and Mix Pickpool Terre from Côte de Tau in France. Yes, we're in a beautiful part of France for this wine. The Côte de Tau is Europe's largest saltwater lagoon, lying just off the Med in the south of France. It's particularly well known as the place where France does almost all of its mussel and oyster farming. No surprise then that this is a region that produces great white wines, perfect for pairing with fish and seafood. In fact, they've even put it on the label. Yeah, I mean, very nice. And it, look, this is a 50-50 blend here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, one of the grapes I've recently grown to know and love, after a recommendation from you, Sam, actually. Uh, the other, I've never heard of. Yes, this is a region pretty much only deals with its own native grape varieties. No Sauvignons or Chardonnays to speak of here. The first grape is Pickpool. Sometimes spelt with a Q, sometimes spelt with a C, depending on where you are. Pickpool de Pinay is a white that we are starting to see more often in the supermarkets or on a wine list. That's the recent favourite of yours, isn't it? It is. Confusingly, Pickpool de Pinay is actually a place or region, not the grape, but does contain 100% Pickpool the grape. This wine is 50% Pickpool and 50% Terre, an ancient grape variety that goes back centuries. It's been used in vermouth making for a long time, and it's also one of the permitted grapes in the world famous Chateau Neuf de Pape. Now, for me, uh, Pickpool is the ultimate patio wine. Uh, it's crisp, simple, uh, ridiculously refreshing. Uh, I like to get it super chilled and smash a couple on a hot summer's day. Uh, this is giving me all the same feels. Absolutely. Terre is also what's called an early ripener, which enables it to maintain high acidity, which is the most important ingredient for that refreshment factor. This wine has had a touch of lees aging, where yeast is left in for a short spell before filtering out to make the wine test richer, but only the slightest whiff. We are definitely, as you say, in the clean and crisp territory here. And I guess if it's not in the sun on its own, based on what you said, this is an easy pairing, right? Yeah, you got it. I mean, it says on the label, perfect with seafood. They say you can almost taste the saltiness, in fact, from this wine from the nearby lagoon. Not sure about that, but I know I could definitely sit through a fair bit of this with a Puy de Mer. Oh, fancy. Cheers. Cheers. This is the Passage du Sud Vermentino from Pays d'Oc in France. Yes, a great variety that though was born in and sounds very much like it comes from Italy, has found its new home in the south of France. We're of course drinking a white wine here, but since Vermentino's rise to popularity in France, it has, it has become one of the key blending grapes in that posh pale stuff, Provence Rosé, where they call it Rollo. But for now, we're sticking with it as a white wine, strutting its stuff on its own. Not too far from the Provence region though. Now, Vermentino definitely sounds very Italian, and I can't remember many Italian wines with French sounding grapes. I thought these guys kept themselves to the cells, like no sharing of work allowed here. You'd be surprised actually how much winemaking these two countries share. Vermentino originated in Sardinia and made its way across to France. Italy's winemaking has been greatly influenced by France. The use of small oak barrels, in particular in red winemaking, and their very own Pinot Grigio is actually a different name from the original Pinot Gris from Northern France. Okay, okay. so look, you've just mentioned oak aging. This is definitely a more full-bodied white wine, and there's a richness to it. Uh, no doubt you're gonna tell me that's coming from oak. Uh, it's almost like creamy. Unfortunately, you've not guessed it this time. No oak here but another aging technique that is commonly used with white wines, lees aging. Lees is the French word for yeast. What they do is after the yeast has done its job of turning sugar into alcohol, the yeast would usually die off, slowly sink to the bottom of the tank and eventually be filtered away. With lees aging, that yeast is left in the wine, being stirred up regularly for several days, if not weeks, before finally being filtered off. What it makes is a dairy-like flavor in white wine. Wines that you might describe as creamy or buttery or rich have, like this one, undergone these aging. Okay, look, look, love it. You know, crisp and refreshing, but uh, with some extra oomph uh, from that lees aging. Uh, what can we pair this one with? It's not super fruity, this wine, but the dairy flavors really do come through. I try it with chicken, with any type of cream-based sauce. Oh, dreamy. Cheers. Cheers. This is the Mont Sable Chardonnay from the Pays d'Oc 
in France. Yes, Chardonnay, a grape that many will write off immediately, but arguably France's most important white grape. Not only that, but the world's most widely planted white grape. Now, here at Smash Grape Sam, we are no strangers to the words anything but Chardonnay. You know, what's that all about? And why are we stocking them if that's the case? Yes, unfortunately, Chardonnay has suffered a bit of a bad rep over the last couple of decades. Thanks to some pretty shoddy winemaking in the 80s, covered up by doses of oak that would left you feeling like you had a mouthful of floor sweepers from Wicks. Chardonnay is, however, an incredibly diverse grape. It can cope with any weather and is different depending on that weather which is why it's grown all over the world. It also pops up in places that perhaps you didn't expect. Champagne. Chardonnay. Chablis. Chardonnay. Uh, the Macon villages. Chardonnay. Domaine de la Vougeray Chevalier Montrachet Grand Cru. Chardonnay. Yes, Chardonnay makes up some of the most prestigious French wines, particularly, as Dan so beautifully pronounced, one of the many white burgundies. White burgundy can be summed up as high acid, crisp and refreshing, with bags of fruit and just a hint of subtle oak to add richness to the wine. These guys are pros, but they're also up their own asses. Travel not far down the road to the Pays Dock and you can find fantastic examples of subtly oak Chardonnay, just like this one. Yeah, this wine definitely feels like Bridgerton meets Moulin Rouge. Classy, but sexy. Uh, there's a lot I like about it. Uh, I'm guessing it's fit for a bit of a banquet as well. Absolutely. This was one of our top picks for Christmas dinner last year and will go down brilliantly with any roasted bird. Lots of flavours in one wine, so it can suit a meal with lots on the table. I mean, I will have it on my table. Cheers. Cheers. This is the Montsable Pinot Noir from the Pays Dock in France. Yes, Pinot Noir, one of France's most important grape varieties, as the grape you'll find in all of its red burgundy, arguably the country's most famous and also most expensive wines. So a quick one on burgundy. Uh, I know you can see famous bottles like uh, Gevray Chambertin go for crazy money, and especially in a restaurant, uh, but I've also seen more accessible price points. You know, are they worth a try? So Burgundy as a region has one of the most complex systems of hierarchy amongst its sub-regions, all with certain rules and regs that dictate how the wine is made and accredited, which ultimately leads to changing prices. Navigating that can be super tricky and there's no real guarantee of quality unless you really get your head down and do some research. What Burgundy is famous for though is bringing the best out of Pinot Noir one of the lighter red grape varieties. They tend to dabble with oak as well to enrich the wine further. So you get an easy drinking wine that's packed full of flavor. And this is where you tell me that, you know, this wine's achieved that too, right? Absolutely. We are not far away here from the southernmost parts of Burgundy. We've got the same grape, we've got the same subtle use of oak, but because we're in the Pays Dock, it's not such a prestigious wine region, we're getting fantastic value for money. This really is a classy wine for the cash, and you could pour any French wine snob with it. Oh, I mean, excellent stuff. To me, what stands out about this wine is that it's just so silky smooth, uh, and it's why I love Pinot Noir. I don't think many reds go down any better. Yes, this is crazy drinkable. Pinot Noir, as a lighter, thin-skinned grape, is already low in tannins. That's the bitter astringency you get with some of the bigger red wines. That all comes from the skin. As I say, Pinot Noir is already fairly light on that, but what the use of oak does is smooth those tannins out even more. And I know this is a great food wine, as we had it as a favourite for Christmas. Yeah, you got it. Just like the Chardonnay made by these guys, it was our top pick for Christmas. Great with a roast, as it's not too heavy, plus it's got enough flavour to match up to those different things going on at a roast dinner. Oof. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Cheers. Cheers. This is Mont Rocher Carignan from the Pays Dock in France. That's right, this relatively unheard of grape variety actually used to be France's most widely planted red grape until it was taken over by Merlot at the end of the 20th century. It's thought to have originated in Spain where it's called Carignana after the region it was born in. It also pops up with the name Samso in the posher Spanish regions of Montsat and Priorat and in Rioja too, as one of the grapes blended into its red wines along with Tempranillo and Ganacha. There, they call it Mazuelo. Okay, okay, so Carignan gets about a bit. Uh, the French love it. Why have I not heard of it? Well, for a long time, Carignan has been loved for its high yield qualities. What I mean by that is it grows a ton of grapes really easily. It can really tolerate the heat and is rough and rugged, meaning it needs little care and attention. 
so can be left to get on with making... Oh, for fuck's sake. That's fine, no. Well, that doesn't really fill me with confidence about quality, though. Usually grapes that grow really well really easily are used as uh, filler grapes, right? You're absolutely right. Carrying on has been favoured by winemakers looking for quantity over quality in the past. But that is where two important words that are written on the bottle of this wine come in. Vieille van, meaning old vines. Young Carignan will produce you a ton of wine, but not the best quality, usually too high in tannin and acidity. Older vines, however, we're talking up to 80 to 100 years old, produce far less fruit, a lower yield, but the fruit they do produce is much higher quality. If you're going to drink wine that's 100% Carignan rather than a blend, look for old vine or vieille van and you're on to a winner. Okay, okay. Well, like juicy is the best way for me to describe this wine. It's just so full of fruit, it, it is juicy. And there's a tiny bit of oak in there. That's right, a whiff of oak adds a nice vanilla note, but that juiciness you talk about comes from the wine retaining some acidity even after getting super ripe. It's that that makes your mouth water after each glug. Okay, talking about glugs, what am I glugging this with? Uh, another great food wine, fantastic with some big flavours like a casserole or roast beef. Oof, I'm in. Cheers. Cheers. This is Felicet Grenache Noir from the Languedoc in France. Yes, Grenache Noir, or just Grenache as it's most commonly known, is another grape with its roots in the Côte de Rhone, but has travelled all over France and Spain. In Spain, it goes into making the famous wines of Priorat and is the main blending partner of Tempranillo in all red Riocas. Back here in France, it makes up to 50% or more of the blend by law of any Côte de Rhone, including Chateauneuf de Pape as well as being used in blends to make the posh pale pink rosés of Provence. Okay, another grape that gets around a bit, but not seen a huge amount of it on its own. You know, why does it favour a blend? Yes, Grenache is another high yielding red grape that does very well in the sun. It gets super concentrated and rich in flavour, and we like to call it jammy. If jammy is not your thing, then by adding in other grapes to add structure, spice or body to the wine, you might get something more balanced, as they say, in the wine game. But if you are looking for an out-and-out -out jam fest, as many of you are in a red, this is the great for you. Yep, love a jammy red. Uh, but what's the difference then between this and some of those big brand names that might even slip the word jam into their name? Well, the problem is the rise of popularity of these really concentrated fruity red wines is that to mass produce them, you have to bring in added sugars to create that cooked fruit flavour. These are the things that tend to give us a rough head the next day, not necessarily the tannins as you may think, they're actually good for you. It's the artificial sugars that are your enemy. Quality winemakers, however, like these guys, will do all of the work in the field, knowing the seasons from years of experience to time the ripening and harvest to perfection. That way, when the grapes come in for pressing, the hard work is done and nothing needs to be added to create that rich red fruit flavour we love. I mean, look, I love it. Uh, what food are we going with here then? Well, one of the other things about Grenache is it retains some acidity really well, even when it gets to the jammy stage. This pairs brilliantly with rich but high acid foods like tomatoes. Any dish with a rich tomato ragu style sauce is going to be a winner. I mean, sounds like a winner to me. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our drink along videos. We hope you enjoyed the wine. Don't forget to come back and spend your £10 voucher on your favourite.